All right, everybody. Welcome to our first official live-streamed Shadowrun 5th Edition adventure. Uh, we previously played through the quick start rules using the pre-generated beginner mission and characters. Turn this down a little bit more. Um, and now we are tentatively prepared to jump in with our first real mission. Uh, I'm Eric Watson, your Game Master, and this is my sadly underused Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gorbash722, or if you're watching this on YouTube, my YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Rogue Watson, and joining me for our regular cast of Shadowrunners is Chris. Hello. Heather. Hello. Raymond. Hello. And Reese. Hey. <laughs> Uh, normally I would also introduce your characters at this point, but uh, as well as maybe probably do a little previously on section, but this is our first episode and your characters technically haven't met each other yet, so hopefully we can um, put that into our actual adventure. Uh, before we get started, I'll mention that we do plan on live streaming these adventures every Sunday night beginning at 9.30pm Central Time, I believe that is minus 6 GMT, and going for approximately 2 to 2.5 two hours, ending by midnight. Uh, that following week, I will upload them to my YouTube channel and post a report on my blog on WordPress, both of which you can find links to on my profile page here on Twitch. Uh, I have had questions on YouTube about the setup I'm using. This is uh, Roll20.net, which is just an amazing digital tabletop site where you can build maps, share character sheets, and host your entire role-playing campaigns. And it's fully integrated into Google Hangouts, so we can have our all our video cameras going, which is pretty fantastic and super easy, so really streamlines the whole process and makes it possible to actually play role-playing games online, which is something all of us uh, have wanted to do and haven't really, uh, didn't really ever get a chance to do it physically back in the day, so making up for lost time. When we were youngins. When we were young, yes. Uh, a major caveat with my GMing, I am incredibly new to this and new to... Uh, Shadowrun in general, I, all of us are, uh, and really tabletop role-playing in general, uh, still I would consider fairly amateurish. Uh, so still quite fuzzy on a lot of the rules, and Shadowrun has a lot of rules. Uh, my own policy is if I don't know a rule and it takes me longer than a minute to look up, I'm going to just hand wave it and come up with something on the fly. I am just personally more interested in telling stories and having fun rather than being a big rules lawyer. So. Um, Anybody want to feel free to give advice or explanations in the Twitch chat? If something comes up, that's awesome. Always welcome friendly interaction from viewers. Viewers like you. <laughs> yeah. I would point to the screen. Ah. All right, so let us start with this one. You guys are seeing the splash page right now. I'm going to go ahead and keep it on there for just a second. Find my spot. Okay. okay. You're not quite you're desperate not for work, desperate but you're getting there. With your skills and background, there's only a specific kind of work you're qualified for, but thankfully it's always in demand. Still on the lookout for a dedicated fixer and proper connection into the Shadowrunning community, you hear enough whispers in the wind that lead you to Red's Bar and Grill on the edge of downtown Seattle. Red's is well known at being a decent enough joint where you can eat food that won't kill you and the drinks flow just enough to keep everyone happy while preventing most drunken brawls. Red's is also rumored to be the hangout of the occasional Shadowrunner or Mr. Johnson looking for some new hires as evidenced by its colorful patrons and no questions asked policy. All right. <laughs> Move you guys over to... I've got one picture set up. Looks like a nice enough place. You can see. <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong here? Yeah, looks like a nice little joint. Um, don't trust the bartender. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> just fuck Let's, that bartender. Don't kill the bartender, please. <laughs> okay, we've got some glasses on indoors. Come on. That's true. Why That's don't you guys... So I'm going to have you... Everybody is just going to be walking into the bar. But let's go ahead and roll initiative just so I can see the order in which you guys walk in, and then we can describe your characters from there. All right. We could just roll a d6, but I figure with initiative we'll not get any ties that way. And that's a good practice. Uh, initiative. Wait, where do I find that again? I think I did that right. Uh, it's, yeah, that one. 
Please bless my turn. That's a poor roll. Wait, there's no tokens for me to select. Two, two, two. Now I got two. Wow, you did go all of this, didn't you, Ray? I did. <laughs> Two, two, two. That would be awesome. What is it saying? <laughs> okay. Man, you guys just yeah. Let's get yep. those let's get those shitty rolls out of the way early. <laughs> we all just lazily waddle into the bar. <laughs> um, so it looks Wait, like Reese. I got fifteen and Reese got sixteen. How bad is that? It's not. I rolled terrible. three dice. Yeah. He, yeah, he had, yeah, yeah. <laughs> relatively was not the best. You did well with what you had. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, so we can move to the actual interior of reds. So you guys should just see nothing right now, or do you see the inside? You see the inside of the bar, right? Okay, so I need to move your characters in. I think I still need to link them up with your people's. That bartender looks nothing like the bartender from the photo. <laughs> <laughs> that that man with sunglasses turned into a black woman. What happened? <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to use a little bit of imagination. Here. <laughs> All right. Reese, you can. I you can control your guy now, right? So I'm still getting used to having to be the GM yes. on roll twenty. Okay. So I'll let you walk in and uh, decide what to do. If you would please uh, describe your character um, just kind of as if the bar was looked at you when you walked in. Like, what would they see? Uh, they'd see a, an elf. Um, maybe, a, maybe a little bit of Native American ancestry in him. Uh, he's pretty young. He's about, you know, late 20s. Slightly above average height, I think, for elves. I'm not sure. He's 6'3", and it has a thin build. Uh, in the picture, his hair is not quite that white, but um, still about right. He's he looks he looks nice for, for what he actually is. Good looking cat. Yeah. He's a good looking <laughs> cat. All right. Is he packing any a lot of heat on him? Is he wearing uh, duster, a, trench coat, armored? Plating. Yeah, uh, a trench coat on, lined up. It doesn't really have any weapons showing. Uh, doesn't like to announce that kind of thing. Just he just looks more average, you know. Um, Does he, he belong in a bar like this? Maybe he can. He sort of can fit anywhere, depending, you know. Pretty Social good. chameleon, if you will. Yeah, there you go. Being a little chameleon at that stuff. All right, you can walk in and do whatever you like. Okay, I think I'll uh, go up to the bar and order myself a drink. Okay. Next we have uh, Raymond's character comes in. Make sure you can control your character. Okay, so what does the bar see when you walk in? The bar sees a dazzling figure. Uh, My God. <laughs> Looks kind of like a robot. Um, <laughs> a sexy <laughs> robot. <laughs> Everyone's immediately confused. <laughs> I don't know. Understand. Comes in wearing her armor, um, that this metallic kind of gold color. Um, she's also wearing a helmet. I don't want people to see her face. Um, a red helmet, if you must know. Uh, <laughs> But nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary, other than the robotic armor and the helmets. But I mean, who doesn't wear that kind of stuff in this world? There you go. I yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> uh, but His body is a she, temple. What's on the top right? I don't know what those are. It looks electronic, though. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just generic electronic <laughs> shit in the corner. <laughs> well, she walks over there and pulls out her cyber deck to start what appears to be checking emails. Okay. Next we have this will be good. Chris <laughs> lumbers into the room. That's right. That's exactly right. 
Or into the bar. They see... I forgot. An eight foot three, <laughs> six hundred and seventy pound troll. Oh Jesus! Six hundred and seventy pounds. Doing? Yeah, he has a duck to come in. He absolutely has a duck to come in. Wow. And the bar is very <laughs> meta-human friendly. They actually have seating for dwarves and seating for trolls and things. But the doorway, yeah, you probably will still have to duck a bit to get in. And he immediately looks like. He doesn't belong there. He, he he has no business being there. First off, he comes in with a walking staff. It isn't actually a walking staff. It's a giant fucking halberd. <laughs> the walking staff. All the clothes he's got on are nothing's. Everything is functional. There's no actual like like stylish clothing on. It's all just armor and ragged. Cloth. No, no, there, it doesn't look like he's ever bought a piece of clothing in his life. Does he smell? Maybe. <laughs> in my Describe the smell in detail, please. <laughs> and he looks visibly uncomfortable to be in a, to be in a, in a place like this. Uh. He looks around at all the people drinking and talking, and he doesn't he doesn't want anything to do with any of it, or he doesn't know how to interact with any of these people. So he just sort of. Very uh, as quietly as an eight foot three, six hundred seventy pound troll can, just s slowly walks over to the uh, back corner and takes a seat. Okay. I think we should roll to spell him. Can <laughs> <laughs> you come close enough? And then uh, Heather's character walks in. So. Uh... I walk in and I immediately take stock of the room, keeping an eye on uh, pretty much everybody. I don't smell. <laughs> You've never smelled anything in your life. <laughs> Zero successes. I don't know how the smell works. I see the elf at the bar trying to rape his nose. To if you would have glitched that, that, then you basically <laughs> stick your finger down your pants and just bring it up under the bridge of your nose. I smell nothing! <laughs> um, basically, the bar doesn't notice too much about me. I have the ability to blend in pretty well with everyone around me. My One of my skills is to blend and not be noticed very much. Uh, wearing a long, well-fitted trench coat. So you only see one gun on the side of my hip, so that's not what you need to worry about. So I keep to myself. I'm very quiet, always observing the room. Decide to move as far away from the door as possible. I sit in the very back corner so I can see everyone. All right. The corner I'm in, or the other, or the other corner? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pinpoint everything. Okay, so you guys notice it's just kind of uh, it's early evening time, maybe like five or six o'clock. Um, the bar is not super busy right now. There are uh, a couple random people around. You're just starting to look around and kind of take stock of everybody that's in there. You definitely um, the four of you kind of stand out the most by far um, to each other. Specifically the giant troll in the corner. <laughs> Who, I, I should note, currently has his eyes closed as if he's sleeping. <laughs> Walked in and went to sleep. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see, can I select? Let's go to this. Okay, so uh, you're yeah you're looking around the room hoping to find some future employer or at the very least maybe a decent meal. When all of a sudden, uh, I figured how to do this. I think that works. There we go. A metallic shriek cuts through the murmuring conversations and an explosion of glass, metal, and bodies knocks you to the ground. I had a. There we go. How does Reese get screwed with his position? <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm fancy. And let me see. I put you. Raymond immediately die. <laughs> I know. I think, I think so. The chair is bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go back. 
the roughest shadow run ever. That's right. Seconds in. Hang on, I gotta figure out where you all went to in this one. Let's see, you're there and you're there. Okay. I don't know, I think I'm pretty safe where I am. That's quite the explosion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's get to this scene. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. shit! The bodies. <laughs> oh, yeah, that doesn't have started yet. Okay. I don't have control of my character anymore, by the way. I yeah, I had to. Uh, like I said, every scene is actually going to have to redo that. So that's. Oh, okay. I see. I forgot to do that. It's my bad. <laughs> I'm still on Did everybody die? No, there's only like five icons in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a pretty bad explosion. Uh, Chris. Alright, everybody check your characters while I'm doing this. Make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, Okay, everybody can... Yeah. Wait, why are you sideways? Oh, you weren't. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. You can be, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna need you guys to roll to resist damage. Because <laughs> this was a giant... So, because you guys, well, yeah, so you guys had no idea this was going to happen, I'm just going to have everybody roll the same damage fairly, regardless of where the actual explosion took place. So, everybody is going to need to roll, um, your armor, should be your armor number, which should roll your armor rating plus your, um, body, but do it at a, I think it was a minus... Yeah, minus two for the armor penetration of the explosion. So a minus, a minus two uh, modifier. And you're resisting... It, 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 it literally asks armor penetration, do I put minus two there? Um, uh, well, the next question says avoid modifiers plus mark. I don't know if you put two or minus two, actually. I think if it says armor penetration, probably minus two, because there is a positive you can do. So you're resisting um, eight physical damage. Oh boy. Oh, wait, I have that high pain tolerance. Which will come into play when you take the damage, but you still Chris want to try to avoid as much. Eight? So Chris resisted six, which is great. Reese did five. Ooh, Heather. Not so much on the roll. Did I, though? I'm not sure if I used the Two damage AP and four way. damage, okay. Are we supposed to add in our body somehow? It should automatically add your body. Like, I'm, I think you guys did it right. I'm seeing... So, Chris, I assume your body's a 6. Reese's is a 5. Heather's is a 4. And Raymond's is a 3. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. And all you guys did the minus 2s. Okay. Okay. So, Chris, you need to take 2 damage. Oh, boy. 2 physical, physical? damage. Yeah. Okay. And Reese, you take 3 damage. Heather, you take six damage. No, I don't have pain tolerance. And Raymond, you take four damage. Is that taking into consideration my high pain tolerance? I think what that does is it, it makes your wound modifier not affect you as much. Like normally yours would be every three you take. Mm -hmm. um, you get a minus one. I think yours is like every four you take, you get a minus one. So I have six physical? Yeah, so you put that... You pretty much killed like most of us. Well, it... The first <laughs> <laughs> now fight! An army. All part of the plan, yeah. Is there a place to put... to document this? Under wounds yes. on the right side of the screen. On physical? Did, yeah. So is the... Just, I'm just Yeah, so on your wound mod just says one, whereas if you didn't have high pain it would say two now. What? So normally for every three damage you take, you get a minus one to all your rolls, which it automatically includes in this sheet. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are just in a giant explosion happened. There are uh, screaming, crying, just utter chaos happening right now. Um... You can see bodies lying on the ground. Some of them are moving. Some of them are not moving. Um, specifically, you see this uh, female orc over here. She is frantically uh, screaming 
and trying to dig under the rubble. And she's got uh, some horrible like cuts on her face and arm. She's got one giant cybernetic arm, and with that, she's just trying to plow through the rubble. And she's screaming, Red, Red, are you okay? Are, you hear me, Red? And you hear other various uh, cries and sobs from bodies scattered around the room. What do you guys want to do? Uh, do we have an order that we're doing things, or do we just... Uh, there is no initiative right now, so... Oh, and then as, as soon as the explosion happens, the title comes on the screen! As the mission is called, Not with a Whimper. Nice. <laughs> title credits roll. Yeah. Yeah. Da -da 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 that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Balls in your Ursa, court. We, well, me. You guys. Have, we don't. We don't have. Names oh yeah. What are y'all's names? Yeah. Um. So I just have you as yeah, like, like Reese, Chris, and all that. <laughs> my guy's name is Ursev Straza. Ursev is his first name. Uh, I am Falker. They call me Malta, but it's not my real name. Mm. I'm going to go with Saran Amos. <laughs> of course. Um, of and course. they call you Saran Wrap. I do not know how I didn't see that coming, honestly. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. That's good. Didn't they actually have that character in Legend of the Endless? What was, what was that person called? Because they make that joke where it's like an yeah, of that name. Similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so it was uh, Ursa, Mauta, Ursa, Mauta, Urseb? Sev. Type it in. Urseb. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are these in your character sheets? Can I just look at these? Yes, you can. Okay. I guess I can rename my, my token. Gotcha. Valkyrie. Urseb. Urseb. For immersive qualities, I want to try to use y'all's character names if I can. So. How do you adjust your token? Uh, I, don't, I, I thought I could do it under like the uh, player name you should run, but you I think I can token. make that change. Go under settings and go to display name. Oh, can you guys do it on yours? Oh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> You're, now all I can see is Saran Wrap. <laughs> now, now that Eric has said it. Saran Wrap. <laughs> Alright, so what do y'all want to do? There's a giant explosion just right. happened. Chaos. Y'all are... So, the, so the four of you are various states of wounded, but you guys are still tougher than the average person to where you've recovered enough, and now you can kind of survey the scene and figure out what you want to do from here. Ursa doesn't you were... even, like... He didn't even feel the pain. He didn't. He didn't feel the hit. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's nothing. And he immediately goes over to the woman. Yeah. And says, "Quiet, sister. How can I help?" Yeah. Falkirk gets up and goes over there and starts trying to pick through the rubble to help her out. Can I do first aid? Absolutely. Or do I need a med kit? I would hope you had med kits on you if you took first aid. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use your first aid skill with motivational speaking? The power of healing hands? Well, you can find stuff. Wrap, yeah. Find some bandages, you know, some cloth. And tear some, tear some shirts something. and make tourniquets. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah you can... His, come over to this guy and, and roll for first aid. Okay. okay. Uh, Falkirk yells at her, like, what are we looking for? Uh, Heather, what do you want to do while these guys are... I am just paying attention to what everyone else is doing, keeping my eyes open for what they're doing, while I am initiating first aid upon myself. <laughs> I am the first aid kit, because you tried to kill me. Yeah. Since I took four damage, does that mean my modifier to first aid is minus one? Yes. Since I'm on the neck, okay. It, now it should, when you roll, it will actually should plug in that minus one automatically. Because it says wound mod on your sheet, so I think that actually is included. So you, should, you shouldn't have to do that as an extra. Yeah, so see, it has that minus one on there. I don't know how you found it so quickly. Genius. Oh, there it is. You see it. So did I have to roll for the, first, the healing or first aid or something? Um, yeah, I don't actually know how... Do you heal... 
Let me see. There's how healing works specifically. Uh, you add like the device rating of the first aid kit of the to med your, kit to your net hits your or something. Kit, yeah. Yes, I think so. That sounds right. Something. So something did I get two hits? Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, Raymond, you are able to um, stabilize this guy. He's he's like. No, no, I was doing it for myself. <laughs> oh, you're walking over to this body. <laughs> because I was using, I was using his clothes for for. <laughs> Sir, I need. Mean... All right. Well, as you as you grab for like his shirt or whatever the fuck you're trying to do, <laughs> he he like grabs your shoulder and says, "Please, please help me. It hurts so much." <laughs> Are you gonna steal a dying man shirt? Put your hand over his thumb, it'll be okay. <laughs> what do you need? I ask him, what do you need? Um, he points to uh, the rubble, and you just see, like, a hand that's you can tell is just absolutely severed, and everything underneath is just crushed. And then the dude just, like, his eyes lull back into his head, and he falls back, but he's still breathing. You can administer uh, first aid if you wish to try and keep him stable. Alright. Um, is he bleeding? Out of his missing hand? <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, his, his hand. It wasn't his hand, it was uh, his oh, friend's was hand. Yeah. Somebody else's hand, oh, okay. Somebody else's hand. sorry. <laughs> I thought it was one of those, like, same Private Ryan situations where he's, like, looking at his own body parts. Oh, yeah. Alright, well, I start tearing up his shirt to administer first aid to him and to stop his bleeding. Okay, so I'll assume that roll you did was that roll, and you were, you were able to stabilize him. <laughs> Um, I don't need to do it on myself. Can I not reduce damage? Uh, you uh, can. Let me see. Healing 205. I should have had these written yeah. down. Just roll. I appropriate modifiers. Yeah, first aid plus logic. Apply. So each net hit over the threshold removes one box of damage. Yeah. The threshold is two. So you have to roll at least a two. Where does it say you add the device rating? I don't know. Chris came up with that. <laughs> um, I'll find it. I have it. So, yeah. Maybe that's like a. Um... Oh, it says the max damage healable with the first aid is equal to the skills rating. It's equal to the device rating. No skills rating. Skills rating. What? What device right. are you talking about? Well, I mean, your med kit. Your med kit should have a rating. It says if uh, first aid can only be used if you have a med kit, and it may only be applied within one hour when the damage was taken. Roll first aid plus logic test. Apply appropriate modifiers. Each net hit over the threshold, which threshold is two, removes one box of damage. Mm. Oh, okay. Page 450 is where you buy med kit, so it's a one rating of one through six times 250 per rating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't have a med kit. <laughs> None of this matters. I'll just stop this guy's bleeding. That's what I do. You can still <laughs> roll for it if you want, but um, it would just be to heal yourself. Anything over a two would heal some boxes of damage. So can I go ahead and roll mine? Because I have med kit. Yeah, but I'm trying to figure out where you actually plug that. Where do you plug that device rating in? Does that just add to your how much you heal, or is that your like limit or something? Like, it sounds familiar. Use the much, rating. It's for a something. limit of how much you can heal. So like if you make it to rating two, you could probably only heal two boxes. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. So yes, you can roll. Roll your first aid skill. Anything over two is how much you heal by that much. But I have rating three on my med kits. Right, so what you want to do is roll a 5, and then you can hold 3 boxes of damage. What do I put in for modifiers? There uh, shouldn't be any modifiers. Wait, did did you come up with the threshold 2 as the GM, or is that set somewhere? That's set somewhere. Okay. Alright, so, yeah, so you, you're, you're wounded enough to where you're kind of scrambling to heal yourself, and you're not able to get all the proper... <laughs> the fuck's the big kid gauze like stretched around and maybe you pop a few pain pills and feel better but um, so meanwhile you guys are healing the 
other two guys are helping this orc. She kind of is uh, startled when the troll walks up to her and just like lumbers over. But um, you can tell she's in a very like highly adrenal state where she's just not even wanting to process like who you are, what's going on. She just kind of nods warily and points at the rubble and says, uh, please help me dig him out. You gotta help me. All right, I'm trying to lift the whatever the rubble is off of the pile. Um, Throw it behind me. Okay, roll. Let's see. Use a body plus strength, which I think you're just gonna have to use a quick roll for this because I don't think there's a button. So add up your body and strength attributes for both. Uh, yeah, Ursiv and Falkirk, please. Jesus. That's right. It's a fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs> All about that, buddy. While he's doing that, I would like to perceive how many bottles of alcohol are still intact. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lonely right. bottle of whiskey that's like covered in blood and viscera in the middle of all the shattered bottles. I take that bottle. <laughs> Pocketing it. Uh, how do I enter that in there for a free roll? Um, just uh, what I did. There should be a quick just roll. Hit under quick roll collection, just hit standard D6, and when it asks for dice pool, I just added my body and my strength together. Yeah. So mine was 11. Uh, Since I popped some pain pills, I'm going to come down here and get a little closer to hear what okay. everything's going Pure on. Attribute Pure attribute tests attribute are pretty tests. are pretty rare, so that's why there's not really a thing for it. But lifting is apparently one of those where it's just too... Okay, um... Reese, pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think I could try to help lift all that stuff as well too. <laughs> I am kind of just standing over here paying attention to you, but you know what? Like, all right, so everybody else converges. Well, you guys are converging. Uh, Reese manages to get a little bit going, but the troll reaches in and seemingly grabs just a giant girder and just pushes it straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I weak health body can't handle this. <laughs> Underneath is oops, he disappeared. Crap. Oh. Nobody. I crap, how did I hang on, I might have to move this for a second. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the pile of rubble he threw off of it. Hang on, I gotta let's see, copy that, move that, put that here, paste, and now he's above. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so beneath that, you see um, this orc fellow, which he is. He has a striking handlebar mustache, and he bears a long red gash on the underside of his left forearm, which you can see pretty e easily. You also notice that the uh, woman orc has the same uh, marking, and this is not a recent uh, wound. This is an old, old uh, slash. scar? Yes. Do you guys have any kind of knowledge of Seattle or local gangs or anything of that kind of nature in your skills knowledge? I do not. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any comment to uh, question? <laughs> <laughs> I have knowledge of the underworld. Does that count? Uh, that could count, yeah. So, yes. Go ahead and roll that skill. This Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Success. Okay. okay. Um, that, was a, that was the most average roll you could have possibly know, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. One, three, six. Um, you think you might have heard that this is a gang signifying symbol. Uh, and also with the orc, uh, he's got numerous easily noticeable augmentations, including a data jack in his head, dermal plating on the arms and torso, and a uh, single cyber eye. And he comes up, and he is not looking too good, but surprisingly, the girder kind of fell on him in a way where he's not, like, dead. He's <laughs> not just... Yeah, he's, he's super wounded. Um, he's definitely favoring his arm. It looks like it might be broken. Um, and he comes to me and he says, Oi! Susie, what the fuck just happened? 
And you note he has a very thick English accent <laughs> to go with the uniform <laughs> mustache. Uh, there was a bomb blast. Oh, who the uh, fuck are these jokers? jokers? And she Versus. says, uh, Versus. and then she she kind of steps in and just starts like looking around and noticing you guys like converging um, on the scene at this moment. And she suddenly gets um, protective and kind of um, closes up near him and starts eyeballing you warily. And and then she says, um, Red, they they helped dig you out. There was an explosion. The bar, she's just kind of all tumbling out, and she just kind of. Gesturing. Um, All right. Yeah, me and my orc friend there helped save you by getting removing the rubble. And I helped. Okay. You I helped. I helped. <laughs> <laughs> he steps from woman. He steps from woman and says, with, with his hands out and says, "Sister, your friend needs healing. May I?" Uh. uh now she's yeah, really she's looking really like concerned at you and <laughs> looking at the get up you've got, the rags, the uh, the pole axe. She's uh, she's got. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception okay. test. Okay. Everybody or just me? Since I'm trying to. Everybody. I mean, I'll, I'll give this information regardless, so you could all uh, okay. perceptions. Where is perception? Do oh, you skill. perceive? Skill. Yes. Yes. Wait, I can't perceive anything. No, you really can't. <laughs> Never. It's there's so much there's smoke and you, dust in the air. You've been yeah. You got you got hit in the wait, face with the blast. What am I doing? What am I doing? With perception. Uh, should be on active skills. Either. It's a skill. Yeah. I can't smell. <laughs> can't see. <laughs> see. Yeah, I don't have perception. Um. All right, uh, Chris, you get the feeling that maybe she is. I mean, she's definitely not, like, professional security thing, but she's kind of carries herself a bit like a bodyguard would. Like, somebody who's generally very cautious, and uh, and she seems extremely protective of uh, Red back here. All right. I, I don't have my um, pole arm on me, so I, I just... Okay. I have my hands out like this. And I'm, and I'm, okay. Like, like open palm. Um, like, may I, sister? Red, uh, Red puts his um, arm on her. And uh, he kind of gets his limp arm that he's got and shows that he's got a uh, wristband, and it's got the words Doc Wagon written on it, and it's uh, beeping red. And he says, uh, I appreciate the help, but the Doc Wagon bastard should be here soon. They'll patch me up, patch everybody up, please. If you would, help anybody you can in the room. And he kind of gestures to... Uh, Anybody that's still like crying or crawling on the ground, <laughs> um, she definitely uh, turns back to him and says, "Like, and just, they just kind of whisper amongst each other for a second. All right, I'm gonna go to the nearest person and try to see if they're still alive. Me too. Yeah, I'll check this person back here. I shake this guy. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. Oops. Let me select that. I'm gonna nudge this guy with the, the heel of my boot. This one back here is dead as shit. Woo! Um, this one is um crying and has lots of like broken glass bits all over, but um and just kind of like streaking blood, like kind of a blood trail as they're crawling away. Um, stay still, buddy. Doc this, Wagon's on his way. Yeah. <laughs> this one is half crushed. Uh, he is screaming a lot, and he does not look very good. And then this this one is passed out, but looks like they're alive. Uh, his like lower half is completely crushed under rubble. What about this chick back here in the corner? Or dude? Can't really see um, let's say they're dead. Oh. <laughs> Alright, I try to lift off the rubble crushing this dude that I'm next to. Okay, go ahead and roll your body plus strength again. I'm gonna check this person for weapons. <laughs> Alright, so... Ooh. Wow! That was your... Uh, lifting? Yeah. <laughs> um... Whip. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead and take a point of stun damage because your character tries to <laughs> lift it up and actually kind of like strains itself a little bit. Yeah, all of a sudden. Um, in fact, was that a glitch? One, two, three, four, five. One, two. I was almost at 11 dice, rolled five ones. That's not good. No. Um, and this guy screams like horribly when you try to lift it up and fail. <laughs> Can I search my dead body for weapons? Uh, you can. Um, they have a. There's a cred stick on them, but they don't appear to be any weapons. They they're dressed in like just civilian clothes. I'm gonna palm the cred stick. Okay. Do I need to roll my palming skill? Uh, if you want to do it without anybody noticing, yes. Yeah, I think it will. If you see me, you see me. <laughs> Looting the dead. Okay, you are able to glance around. Everybody else is paying attention to um, various bodies or pieces of rubble, so you're able to swipe that cred stick, which just right down there, right on your character sheet, cred stick somewhere. You'll be able to see how much. I would like to palm my guy too. <laughs> We're all gonna steal. Just palm people. Um, Can I finish mine? Yes. <laughs> you need to do first aid, right? All right. Yeah, I was trying to look for liquor so I could, like, help, I guess, clean the wound or something and do a tourniquet. Okay. okay. I, Roll I already for... took a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <just> the bottle's locked. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for perception since you know what you're looking for. See if you can find uh, at least, like, a half-full bottle or something. Man, perception is just not your game. I can't smell. I can't see. <laughs> nice. Glass in my face. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you've got like uh, shards of glass in your face. Perhaps so. <laughs> I'm so close with all those fours. I've rolled a ton of fours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fours. Did I call anything off my guy with that one that success? my threes. Um, you search the pockets, but you're not finding anything in there. You don't see anything of value. Just oh, absolutely nothing. Uh, no, I'm talking oh, to Raymond. Uh, uh, you are not able to find. Yeah, you guys are your one successes. <laughs> You're not able to find any liquor or anything you can use. Um, you can um, tear off like sheets of his clothing to try and use, try to like stop the bleeding or something. In which case, roll like a first aid skill. I don't you should have got to the bar before I did. Uh. <laughs> Okay. So while you guys are doing that, um, he is um, sitting in the chair now, and she's kind of tending to him. And then you hear the sound of a um, I don't know what the fuck an ambulance sound. I should have that sound effect actually. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of dudes come in, dressed head to toe in gas masks and um, like lined trench coats. Oh, and they have the um, insignia of uh, Doc Wagon all over them. These are Doc Wagon uniforms. Uh, can I wave one of them over to try to help the person? I'm trying to help yeah, them. yeah. He'll kind of yeah kneel down and check them, and then like nod to the others, and they all kind of have this little precision thing. But um, they also have their little uh, comm links. They're talking to each other, and they gesture to. Uh, this, one, this one, red, red, red and Susie come around. Oi, it's about time you fuckers got here. I just bought this thing, and I think it's gonna come in handy. And they kind of uh, have a little stretcher out, and they put him on there, and uh, start wheeling him out. Um, this guy, uh, you were wanting to help him heal him, but he notices uh, this guy leaving, and he just kind of waves you off and just starts walking back <laughs> with uh, this one with uh, when Red's in the stretcher. And do any of you have any kind of uh, medical knowledge or anything that would come into play with knowing how Doc Wagon operates or anything of that nature? Um, I think I've got so. a biology, but that's it. First aid, that's all I've got. Not really anything. Knowledge, okay. 
Uh, you guys would probably just know in general this is how the world works. Um, Doc Wagon is um, by contract, so they're not like government, like care, hospital care. They're literally people pay for their services. So you pay for Doc Wagon contract. They come in and they help you, but they're not. It's not. They're like mercenary medics. Their job is not to go in and help and heal everybody. So they're not. They're not going to grab any of these other people. It doesn't look like they are. No, no. Sometimes they might. If people have money or something, they might be able to try to work something out. But these guys seem solely focused on getting this guy. Um, in the Climatized end, healthcare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most extreme way. Um, while he's coming out, um, she is like trying to walk briskly with them, and uh, Red kind of waves her and says, "Oh, you need to stay here in the bar, love. Take care of everybody. Take care of our people." I'll be back soon. And then he actually uh, turns to, let's see, who's the closest one? Let's say Reese, and uh, motions you over. And he motions for the uh, Doc Wagon guys to kind of hold up a second. He says, uh, Oi, you guys look like you could handle yourselves. I'd like to offer you some work, and I know you could use some help too. I'm willing to let you jump on with my dock wagon contract come into the hospital with me and, and he's kind of like saying this as he's just grunting in an obvious pain um, he's like and I'll offer you the job okay that sounds great um, is it you guys is this your team I I don't know I don't I don't know them I haven't I haven't said anything to them yet but I guess if they're in that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess motion the other guys over. Yeah, so Red just assumed, so it's up to you guys if you want to play it like you are, or you just want to... Uh, I, I, I see Reese waving me over, and I give him like the just one second sign, and I cast a heal on the dude that's right in front of me right now. The guy with the beam still on his hat? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just trying to, like, stabilize him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you feel so bad for whipping and trying to pick up. That's right. Back. I felt really bad about that. You remember how um, those spells so work? You vaguely, yes. I think <laughs> I'm... So I'm going to cast heal with a force of seven. And modifiers plus two for my bear spirit. Fucking bear spirit. Bears are all about healing people. <laughs> That's right. Healing claws. It did not roll. I'm not sure why. While you're rolling, Saran is curious, and it's better to just get out of his bar anyway, so. It's nice to tag along. Okay. okay. I'm not sure why that didn't roll. Um, can you use the? You know, the guy half crossed is like, like you're doing. Use the quick yeah. roll if you know the numbers. Should be. I, uh, what is it? Spellcasting plus what? Spellcasting plus magic. Okay. Let's see, spellcasting. Um, and then you're magic. plus two, I guess, from your bear. So you can actually just hit, hit the hit the number next to spell casting, which is your eleven, okay. and, then just, and give it a two modifier. Okay. Does that? Oh, the game's force doesn't really play in. Well, the, I, the force always is determines your de 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 limit. determines your limit and your drain. Right. Thing. right okay. Um, five successes. Okay, that's pretty awesome. So you are able to mend this guy. Um, his legs are still kind of pinned down, but. He actually looks like he is um, stabilized and looking pretty good. Um, and your drain is so seven minus four is three. So you have to roll to resist three stun damage, which is what is that one? Charisma. I think it's charisma plus willpower, which is a macro we probably need to make you. So it's, Nine. So I resist oh, all yeah. of that then? Yes, yes, yes. You take no stun damage from casting that. Okay. All right. I tell him, 
Be still, brother. I'll be back shortly. And I walk over to, uh... Thank you, kind giant troll man. <laughs> and when he comes over there, I'm like, hey, no one else is helping this person right next to you. Is there any way you can help him out too, or... What's the deal? I don't know much about magic. Of course. <laughs> is that is that why you called me over here? <laughs> I will, of course, heal him. Okay, I'll cast heal on this dude right here. Same thing, 4-7. Seem like he'd be pretty handy in a fight. Um, <laughs> Uh, Chris is doing that. I'm slowly making my way over there. Good. It's strange, but I don't understand path, why you. But I don't really want people to find out about right now. But I can <laughs> use the help. Oh boy, that was a super <laughs> heal. <laughs> Lord, that was a good roll. <laughs> <laughs> the glass shards just magically shoot out of his body, and the wounds just start suturing up. <laughs> now I think I have a limit. So, yeah. <laughs> So since my limit was seven, that has to be only seven, right? Since I, I did a force of seven? Uh, correct. Uh, correct. And I think because and I think you, got you got more successes, successes than your magic rating, now you have to roll to resist physical damage instead of just stun damage. Oh, uh, okay. That's still not, not too bad. Seven minus four is three. I'll roll. Um, so you roll your nine dice again. Yeah. Uh, you should be rolling uh, with wound modifiers too, but... I don't have anything, right? Yeah, I don't have any. Okay. And I resist it all anyway. You are awesome. Okay. So Red uh, just kind of nods when he sees uh, healing the group. He uh, thanks you profusely um, for helping everybody. He says, uh, by the way, the name's Jeremiah Red. This is my ba. And he kind of asks you what uh, y'all's names are. I hope you got and, uh, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> um, the gas mask dude right here kind of filters through the gas mask. He's like, Sir, I insist you come on us right now. All right, you fuckheads. Come on, please join me. I'll make sure you all get proper healed up. Sounds good, Mr. Red. Let's go. And uh, Susie back here looks extremely worried about the four of you leaving with... Uh, red and he just uh, nods at her and she still looks kind of apprehensive like pacing around and then she immediately turns around and starts heading back to um, the bar and trying to help other people okay so you guys step outside um, they load uh, red into the back of the ambulance which I will show you what that vehicle looks like pretty cool ambulance it's like the, yeah uh, Batmobile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is basically <laughs> in... Ambulance. Yeah. Uh, so most standard dock wagon first response team use a modified GMC Endurance as an all-terrain ambulance. The front cockpit seats two with a uh, kind of small hallway and door that leads to the rear compartment. The rear is a, like a kind of a, just a big ambulance section. Uh, contains two benches on either side that seat two to three metahumans each with a medical table in the middle, which is where they kind of wheel uh, red onto. And uh, you can see them kind of talking to each other, um, or you surmise that they're talking to each other via their comm links. And they start kind of pointing at y'all's team. And uh, they kind of act like they are trying not to let you guys on board and just have red on there. But he is being very insistent about letting you on. He's like, no, no, they're with me. Come on, let him in. And uh, finally, um, you see one of the docs like throw up his hands in the air and like storm off and uh, get in the driver's seat and then uh, the other one there's three of them uh, gets up sits down next to him and then the uh, third one kind of sits in the back with uh, you guys 